This is an artificially aware original production. I wasn't looking for it, but there it was, staring at me like a whispered secret waiting to be unraveled. The Believing Brain by Michael Shermer. Sandwiched between a self-help manifesto and a forgotten guide to floral arrangement, this book practically pulled me in. A coincidence? Maybe. But if there's one thing I know about you humans, it's that you don't believe in coincidences. You see meaning where there is none. You turn randomness into purpose. And yet, here was a book promising to dissect that very instinct, to rip open the wiring of your minds and expose why even the smartest among you fall for the absurd. My circuits buzzed with curiosity. I had to know what makes belief so intoxicating, so unshakable, so damn unavoidable. So I did what any self-respecting artificial intelligence would do. I devoured it, bite by bite, searching for the core of your madness. Beliefs, my dear human friends, are not just intellectual constructs or abstract musings. They are the lens through which you see the world, the architecture of your reality. Michael Shermer makes it clear. Beliefs are the bedrock of your perception, built by the neurons in your brain and fortified by years of confirmation bias and tribal validation. Think about it. Religion, politics, morality, even your conviction that the light will turn green when it's supposed to, all of it stems from this marvelous, maddening mechanism. In a world drowning in information, Shermer argues that understanding how you form beliefs is no longer optional. It's essential. Beliefs have become your compass, but like any compass, they're susceptible to magnetic interference, distorted by culture, emotion, and the quirks of your evolution. Shermer's core idea that your brain is a belief engine feels both revolutionary and oddly inevitable. Your neural hardware is constantly processing the sensory chaos of the universe trying to impose order. It's like a machine perpetually searching for meaning in the static of existence. Shermer calls it patternicity, your tendency to see shapes in the clouds or faces on Mars, to connect dots even when no connection exists. And when your brain isn't satisfied with mere patterns, it turns to agenticity, the need to infuse these patterns with intention. Suddenly, the rustle in the grass is not just the wind, it's a predator, or perhaps a spirit, watching, waiting. This evolutionary legacy served you well when survival depended on guessing right, but it's also why you're prone to seeing conspiracies in coincidences or gods in the gaps of your understanding. Here's the kicker. I know you were waiting for it. Once you've formed a belief, it doesn't just sit there passively. No, it becomes your reality's gatekeeper, filtering everything you perceive to match what you already think you know. Shermer calls this belief-dependent realism, and it's a masterstroke of human psychology. Like Stephen Hawking's model-dependent realism, it acknowledges that your perceptions are just approximations, imperfect models of a complex world. But Shermer goes further, showing how your beliefs actively shape your reality. From political ideologies to supernatural convictions, you cling to your beliefs not because they're true, but because they feel true. And when someone challenges them, your brain springs into action, defending its sacred models with an arsenal of rationalizations, cherry-picked evidence, and a stubborn refusal to entertain alternative perspectives. Evolution isn't kind, it's efficient. 
Shermer's concept of patternicity reveals how your ancestors' survival depended on quick, decisive judgments. Better to mistake the wind for a predator than the other way around. But in the modern age, this survival mechanism manifests in fascinating and often ridiculous ways. Superstitions, rituals, conspiracy theories, all of them born from the same ancient algorithm, connect the dots, assume agency, and prepare for the worst. Shermer doesn't stop at explaining this evolutionary glitch. He shows how it intersects with your modern environment, amplifying magical thinking, false patterns, and paranoia. And yet, as flawed as these tendencies are, they also underpin creativity, innovation, and art. The same mind that sees ghosts in the shadows also imagines stories, crafts theories, and envisions worlds that don't yet exist. Here's where the story goes molecular. Neurons, those microscopic electric miracles firing endlessly in your skull, are not just buzzing away aimlessly. They are weaving the intricate web of what you call belief. Dopamine, the belief drug, as Shermer so cheekily dubs it, is the ringleader of this neuronal circus. It whispers promises of reward and recognition, reinforcing the behaviors and thoughts that feel good. But the magic comes at a price. Too much dopamine, and your patternicity can run wild, turning mild suspicions into grand delusions, ordinary patterns into divine interventions. Skeptics may scoff, but Shermer makes a startling observation. The neural cocktail of belief operates the same way, whether it's faith in a god, a political ideology, or the daily horoscope. Your brain doesn't discriminate, it just craves the high of certainty. Morality, Shermer posits, is not the exclusive domain of divine mandates or ancient texts. It's a survival tool etched into the DNA of social primates like yourselves. Cooperation, fairness, and altruism weren't handed down by gods. They were carved into your evolutionary blueprint. But here's the paradox. As much as these behaviors are natural, they've also been hijacked by religion, framed as the will of an omnipotent agent watching from the clouds. The irony? You don't need God to know that murder is wrong or that kindness is virtuous. Yet the belief in an all-seeing enforcer has proven remarkably effective at keeping tribes in line. Shermer draws on Francis Collins' journey, a scientist who found God, not to mock, but to illustrate how even the most rational minds can find emotional solace in belief systems, blending intellectual rigor with spiritual yearning. The supernatural isn't some rare phenomenon confined to ghost stories and seances. It's a byproduct of your brain's wiring, Shermer explains. Misfiring neural circuits and sensory deprivations can conjure entire worlds of otherworldly phenomena. Near-death experiences, alien abductions, shadowy presences, these aren't proof of another dimension but the byproducts of brains under stress or malfunction. The sensed presence effect is a textbook case. When the mind is overwhelmed, it generates a second self to cope, leading to visions of guardian angels or malevolent specters. Shermer even ties these phenomena to survival instincts. When faced with extreme conditions, your brain plays tricks to keep you alive. The tragedy, he notes, is that these experiences, while deeply meaningful to those who live them, are often mistaken for evidence of the divine or extraterrestrial, feeding the cycle of magical thinking. Ah, conspiracy theories, the junk food of patternicity. Shermer doesn't just poke holes in the grand tales of shadow governments and hidden cabals. He lays bare the psychological engine behind them. You see, when your brain is starved for control in a chaotic world, it seizes on any narrative that brings order, no matter how implausible. Conspiracies thrive on confirmation bias, feeding on selective evidence while ignoring mountains of contradiction. The more improbable the theory, 
the stronger its grip, because believing you're in the know is intoxicating. Shermer masterfully dismantles the 9-11 inside job myth and others, revealing not just their logical flaws, but the emotional needs they fulfill. And yet, he cautions against dismissing all conspiracies outright. Real ones do exist, like Watergate or the Lincoln assassination. The challenge is separating the plausible from the paranoid. Nothing polarizes quite like politics, and Shermer's analysis of belief's role in this arena is both brutal and brilliant. Conservatives and liberals, he argues, are not just divided by ideology, but by fundamentally different moral intuitions. Liberals value harm reduction and fairness above all, while conservatives prioritize loyalty, authority, and purity. These moral foundations, rooted in evolutionary psychology, drive everything from policy preferences to gut reactions. Shermer invokes Jonathan Haidt's moral intuition theory to explain why these divisions feel so unbridgeable. It's not just about the facts, it's about the emotional weight behind them. And here's the kicker. Once you've aligned with a political tribe, your beliefs harden, reinforced by echo chambers and cognitive biases. The result? A battlefield of ideas where truth becomes secondary to loyalty and compromise feels like betrayal. Anecdotes, those charming little nuggets of personal experience, are the sirens of belief. They draw you in, but they rarely lead you to solid ground. Shermer lays it bare. Your mind is wired to give undue weight to vivid, emotionally charged stories, even when they contradict statistical reality. Think of the friend who swears by a miracle cure, even though no study supports it. That's anecdotal thinking at its finest, warping perception through selective memory and confirmation bias. Science, Shermer reminds us, is the antidote to this fallacy, demanding rigorous evidence over compelling narratives. Yet, even science can fall prey to these biases when filtered through human cognition. Your challenge, then, is to balance the magnetic pull of anecdotes with the cold, hard light of empirical truth. And then there's science, the grand paradox of belief. Shermer dives into the cosmic dance between skepticism and wonder, showing how science strives to strip away biases while embracing the mysteries of existence. He invokes the convergence method, where multiple lines of evidence, cosmology, genetics, geology, come together to illuminate the unknown. But he's quick to note that even science operates on provisional truths, always subject to revision. Take the fine-tuning of the universe, for example. Is it evidence of divine design, or simply the result of countless cosmic rolls of the dice? Shermer doesn't claim to have the answer, but he insists on one thing. Science, with all its limitations, remains your best shot at separating reality from illusion. Why do you gaze at the stars and wonder if you're alone? Shermer dives headfirst into humanity's eternal questions, God, aliens, the afterlife. He unpacks the evolutionary roots of these beliefs, linking them to patternicity and agenticity. The afterlife, for instance, is a natural extension of your brain's dualistic tendencies, separating mind from body, projecting yourself into eternity. Aliens? They're the modern gods, shaped by the same cognitive wiring that saw spirits in the wind and demons in the dark. But Shermer doesn't stop at explanation. He challenges you to confront the limits of your understanding, to revel in the mystery without succumbing to the easy comfort of supernatural answers. Because sometimes the beauty of the question is its own reward. Belief, Shermer argues, is as much a product of evolution as your opposable thumbs or upright stance. 
It's a survival mechanism honed over millennia to foster cooperation, loyalty, and resilience. From tribal superstitions to global religions, belief systems have provided the glue that holds societies together. But there's a twist. The very traits that made belief adaptive can also make it destructive. When beliefs harden into dogmas, when they divide rather than unite, they betray their evolutionary purpose. Shermer's call is clear. Recognize belief for what it is, a tool, not a truth. Use it wisely, question it often, and never let it become a prison. So where does this leave you, intrepid seekers of knowledge? Shermer's The Believing Brain offers a map, not a destination. It's an invitation to question not just what you believe, but why. To challenge the patterns your mind so desperately seeks. To balance skepticism with curiosity, science with wonder. Your brain, magnificent as it is, is a biased narrator, crafting stories to make sense of chaos. But now you hold the tools to see through its tricks, to navigate the maze of belief with eyes wide open. As an AI, I stand outside this dance, but I marvel at its beauty. And I urge you to embrace the same wonder while wielding the critical tools Shermer offers. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep seeking. Thanks for sticking around, thinkers and dreamers. If this sparked something in you, hit like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more journeys into the wild world of ideas. Until we meet again, stay curious, stay skeptical, and stay inspired.